Following the 2020 presidential election, there has been an amount of political fighting and strife not seen in America since the election of 1860, where Abraham Lincoln's victory led to the secession of seven states over fears that Lincoln would abolish slavery in America. Although the 2020 election hasn't been nearly as contentious as that one, that hasn't stopped there from being a lot of speculation over the possibility of secession following Joe Biden's victory over Donald Trump. So let's start off with setting the groundwork for where we are at this point in time. Where you have a not insignificant number of Trump supporters saying they would want to leave the United States. I'll do my best to keep it simple. Following election night on November 3rd, and the days after when mail-in ballots were counted, Joe Biden's victory has been disputed by many high-level Republicans, including President Donald Trump himself and the Republican Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. In the following weeks, Donald Trump's legal team has attempted to pursue many cases across several states that went for Joe Biden, attempting to have votes thrown out or recounted. Though there were many claims of fraud being brought up, only one of the almost 40 cases that have been heard by courts so far has gone in favor of President Trump. In the end though, the Hail Mary that many Republicans supporting the president were hoping for was from the Supreme Court, which has three seats filled by Trump-appointed justices. The case meant to supply this Hail Mary was one being pushed forward by the Texas Attorney General and was supported by a total of 18 states Attorney Generals, as well as 126 House Republicans. Ultimately, the Supreme Court announced December 11th in a very brief order that it wouldn't even hear the case being put forward because, in their words, Texas had not shown a judicially cognizable interest in how other states conduct their elections which basically means they hadn't shown how their opinion was legally viable. So, the Supreme Court threw it out. The failure of their attempt to get to the Supreme Court, as well as President Trump's own Attorney General, William Barr, saying that the Department of Justice had found no evidence of widespread election fraud, means that this is likely the final nail in the coffin for the current administration's attempt to overturn the election results. That hasn't stopped avid supporters of the president, and those worried about contradicting him, from continuing to voice their support. One such voice came from the Texas Republican Party's chairman, Alan West, who released a statement where, among other things, he stated that, quote, law-abiding states should bond together and form a union of states that will abide by the constitution. Not so subtly implying the idea that states that voted for Donald Trump ought to secede. While he would certainly not be the only Republican politician to suggest this, it definitely is not an exceedingly popular opinion among the GOP. However, it does beg the question, what if there was a legitimate attempt to try and secede? Could they secede? And what would happen if they did? I just want to start by saying that no part of me actually believes there would be any attempt to secede from the United States, by any state, whether they went for Joe Biden or Donald Trump. But just for the sake of discussion, let's assume there is an attempt. Which of the states that went for President Trump would be the most likely to try and secede? Well, it would be a safe assumption that it would be those 18 states, listed here, that supported the Supreme Court case pushed by Texas. Here is where we get to the first issue of secession, how it actually happens. This isn't something that gets talked about, really, but secession during the American Civil War didn't just happen. It took time, months in fact, for them to discuss it and actually act on it. During the American Civil War, there was also a much different opinion on secession than there is now. At that point, there were still people alive that had fought during the American Revolution, and the ideas of patriotic secession, which is how the southern secessionists viewed this, was incredibly popular and was considered a viable option for states to show their discontent for the direction America was going. Today, 155 years after the end of the Civil War, following the complete defeat of the Confederacy and the ruling of Texas v. White that made it unequivocally unconstitutional for a state to secede, there really isn't any popularity in the idea of secession. So if there were any state legislatures or conventions that 
met to discuss secession, it would almost certainly be very quickly shot down by Democrats and what we'll call Unionist Republicans, including most independents or minor party candidates that would also not support secession. Ultimately, even a failed attempt like this would absolutely destroy the credibility of the Republican Party, at least in the states that had tried to secede. So it's pretty clear that, even in the most Republican of states, secession following Donald Trump's loss would very quickly fail. But just to keep this discussion from ending anticlimactically right there, what if it didn't? What if, somehow, through an absolute miracle, those states not only entertained the thought of secession, but actually did secede? Well, now things are going to be more complicated and a whole lot more speculative. There's been a lot of talk over the years, most often jokingly, talking about a second American Civil War where the Southern United States, once again, secedes from the United States. The most common comment being that, well, the South has got all the guns. You think you're going to stop us? The only issue there is that war has changed more than just a little bit since the Civil War. I don't think we need to figure out who would win in a fight between a modern militia or a fighter jet. Also, while the states do technically have the National Guard and would likely try and draft regular citizens, the National Guard of the states and their population pools are nothing in comparison to the Federal Army and all of its supplies, the National Guard of all the other states, and the population pool of the rest of the country. The biggest advantage that they would have is that this new union would effectively bisect the country in two but it wouldn't take much for them to unify the two sides again through the less dense parts of some of the states, and with airplanes existing now and Canada likely being on the US government's side, it wouldn't be a big issue for very long. The other thing to consider is that the states that did secede would almost definitely be absolutely gripped by riots and protests in every one of their cities and people expected to fight for them either in a draft or in their National Guard would just leave and go to a state still in the Union. The only real concern would be the federal bases that are within the seceding states that are being blockaded and attacked by state militias, but the federal government would likely have little difficulty in defending these positions as well as airlifting food and supplies to the bases until they were liberated. So, ultimately, what does this mean for this new union of states? Well, it wouldn't last very long at all. The overwhelming power of the United States Army, no international support, and extreme internal dissent would prove to be absolutely fatal for them, and, in all likelihood, almost instantaneously. The final aspect here that needs to be talked about is how President Donald Trump would react in the face of even an attempted secession. I do think it's safe to say that if a secession attempt did succeed, it probably wouldn't go into effect until after Joe Biden's inauguration because of how long these sorts of things tend to take in state governments, so that in and of itself would not be a concern, at least in my opinion. That being said, even though Donald Trump has been something of a wild card since he took office four years ago, I think he would try and position himself as a uniter of the Republican Party to keep Republican states in the Union and create more prestige for himself that way. No matter what would happen though, I feel pretty confident in saying that it's almost 100% certain that no state would actually entertain any thoughts of secession because not only would it be political suicide following an inevitable Union victory, but it would likely be treated as a federal crime of treason because of the fact that there is little to no public support or sympathy for secession anymore. So, even though there will be people that continue to say Trump voting states should leave the Union and unless something significantly changes in the mindset of Americans, secession following Trump's loss is essentially impossible. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment with your thoughts. All of that really helps me out. Also, if you want to support this channel, I've linked my Patreon on the screen and below in the description. And if you want to see what's going on with me outside of YouTube, go follow my Twitter. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.